Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk uh, about the different types of references I use for studying drawing. One thing I do want to mention in the beginning is that the footage of me at the zoo doing some drawings from life is about six months old. I went vegan around that time and wasn't quite educated yet about animals at the zoo and the ethics about it. And drawing animals from life is amazing to learn gesture and observation, but if you are interested in animal rights and animal welfare, I don't recommend going to the zoo. I would recommend you drawing your pets or the pets of your friends, or maybe going to a local shelter, um, taking the dogs for a walk, um, or animal sanctuary. So now onto the actual video. So the first page that I filled I did with my own photo reference that I took at the zoo and the other half is with photos I found on Pinterest um, that are really good references. And this is actually a different form of using references, is drawing from life and from, from the real life living thing. And some people may argue that this is the only way of using reference, that you only should draw from life, but they, I think that's not quite true and there are a few reasons why this does not really apply, I think. For this video I just wanted to stick to um, big cats, lions and tigers just to keep it in one general theme and at the zoo I wasn't able to draw the big cats because they're moving a lot and I really tried it but they were just too far away and that's a big problem I think with drawing from life there are things like lions and giraffes you can't just see everywhere and draw them from life whenever you need it. So I took a few photographs of the big cats that I could find and used them as reference. But there are actually a few issues with that too, because my camera isn't really that great and the cats were really far away and also you can't really predict how the cat is behaving and sometimes they are in poses that are quite boring and you maybe not really learn anything about the anatomy or the movement or the shapes of the thing, the living thing, or the cat, because um, as you can see with this snow cat, um, it was lying down, and it's it's a cute cat, and it's a cute drawing, but you can't really see the anatomy, maybe just a little bit of foreshortening, but yeah, that was my big biggest problem with my own photographs. But I still think that there are some benefits to using your own reference or drawing from life because you get a little bit more feel of the animal that you're drawing and how they behave and maybe you can see them moving and I think it's a great idea to maybe take some videos of them instead of photographs just to get the gist of their movement. Yeah, here I'm um, starting to take the reference from Pinterest and um, that has a few advantages. Because those photographs are um, from professional photographers, they are of much higher quality and you can actually see the muscles and have some good lighting and good shading, which is um, great for drawing from reference. Um, I would always recommend if you draw humans, if you draw things, uh, furniture or big cats, to use references that have some great lighting so you can see the forms and the shapes. And that's actually uh, the way I start sketching. I search for shapes, usually somewhat of triangle um, shapes, to get the overall drawing done. And only then I go into the details of the thing that I'm drawing. I have a quite minimal way of drawing, um, but I really like that. But if I go into shading, I always use references that have really good lighting so I can see the shapes underneath the skin maybe or whatever else.
So here you can see my process, how I start really lightly when I start sketching. You almost can't see the lines that I do and only then I go into finding the actual contour of the thing that I'm drawing. And this is actually a tiger I found on Pinterest and I really like tigers. And I, I think it's, it turned out quite good. Um, it wasn't really my day of drawing. I did these spreads over um, a few days because I wasn't really feeling it. I uh, still have to find my way, um, my routine in drawing. I have some issues with finding a good routine because I love to draw in the morning, but I also have other things to do in the morning. I think you all know how that is, but that's a different tangent. To get back um, to the topic at hand, um, I think that using references is really important. I think there is still a stigma to using references, as if it wasn't creative or you weren't a real artist if you uh, wouldn't draw just from your imagination. But I think that actually every really big and talented artist um, and skilled artist used reference at some point. Um, the thing with using photographs that aren't yours is that you can't use them for your own artworks because there are rights to it, but um, you can use them to learn and I think that's really important. And here you can see me switching to the um, book that I got for Christmas and this is the last form of reference that I want to talk about it's using other artists as reference and this actually has the same problem as using um, photographs from photographers um, is that you don't own the rights to the drawings but it's really beneficial to use those to learn because those artists are already figured out the anatomy and they did a huge part of the learning before you and you don't have to go through all of that again you don't have to um, go to foreign places to find real life tigers and study them for years and years you just can use um, the reference that um, other artists give you and this is one of the books that actually encourages you to use them as a reference it wants, wants to teach you um, this book has a few really good anatomy studies um, that help me a lot to understand the structure of those cats and it also I think um, helps with smaller cats like domesticated cats because they're not really that different, maybe not as buff <laughs> and muscular as the tigers and lions I draw here. But um, it really helped me, especially with the um, drawings of the legs and the paws, because if I used the photo reference, you couldn't really see the paws because there were always um, like grass things <laughs> covering it. So that helped really a lot. And the artist um, also kind of stripped the skin off the animal that sounds horrible but you know what I mean you can see the muscles and that helped really a lot because um, cats especially have somewhat larger skin than their structure so the skin always hangs a little bit down um, so you have quite a hard time to see um, where they actually have their bones and muscles. I still hear a lot of people talking about using other artists for reference as if it was the same thing as copying another artist and that's not what I want to say with it. You shouldn't copy artworks of other artists and pretend it's your own, obviously, um, but you can use the techniques that other artists used to learn yourself and it does not need to be the anatomy of animals or humans it also can be the way another artist painted you can study their paint strokes their pencil strokes and um, to improve your own i think that's all valid you shouldn't just um, copy the same thing and pretend it's your own i think that's clear for everyone
Another thing that this book provides is the way animals move. So you have those um, illustrations of movement quite like uh, in animation. And I used that to fill the last sketchbook page that I fill here. Um, and it's a cat kind of jumping. I don't have the full jump, but I have the starting point and how the cat lands. And I think that's really interesting um, how the um, body works when the cat kind of shrinks together and when it actually jumps it stretches and that's a ve very interesting thing about cats because they always seem to be quite liquidy <laughs> um, in their movement they can stretch a lot but they also can get really sm small and round and that's really interesting that this book um, provides this and another tip that i wanted to give you is that i highly encourage you to get this book if you want to draw animals better it really helps me um, but i think you can almost get every page of this book on um, pinterest i found um, a lot of the illustrations from the book i found on pinterest i don't know if that's all or just um, the biggest part of the book but uh, I would recommend just just looking for it but it's not an expensive book and if you like you're like me and you like having real physical books about this stuff I really can recommend it um, there are cats and the horse family deer family um, dog family is very interesting because uh, dogs are so versatile and he really goes into it how um, small dogs and big dogs um, differ from foxes and wolves and stuff like that and you with at every animal you draw you learn more about every other animal because they are all four-legged um, there are no birds and stuff like that in there I think they're just um, mammals you also have elephants and giraffes and yeah but um, besides the birds there's quite everything in it and um, yeah, I think I improved a lot since I started studying and studying it from there. At the end here I did go back and uh, corrected this drawing because it seemed a bit skinny I think it uh, didn't really look right and um, that's actually all um, that's my two sketchbook spreads that I filled with studies and my idea is to next time use those studying um, things to draw from imagination because that's quite a different thing and yeah I hope you liked it and I see you next time bye